This is Twit. Many of you may have heard of the ambitious project driven by Elon Musk's SpaceX called Starlink. Now it targets to provide high speed, low in low latency broadband around the world. Well, to achieve such ambitious goals, SpaceX will need to go on a campaign to create a large constellation of satellites to service such a wide surface area. You're going to have to send a bunch up. Now, unfortunately, this type of ambition would requires actually has a bunch of roadblocks too. Now, originally SpaceX went to at the FTC for approval of launching over 4,425 satellites, the low orbit satellites between an altitude of uh, 1,110 kilometers to 1,325 kilometers. But in order to reduce the number of satellites needed and ensure connectivity goals, SpaceX will need to reduce the orbital altitude of the satellites to a much lower orbit. Now, the question being, will this have an effect on the safety of the satellites as well? Well, SpaceX believes that, and I quote, given the atmospheric drag at this lower altitude, this relocation will significantly enhance space safety by ensuring that they, any orbitable de- any orbitable debris will quickly re-enter and demise in the atmosphere. Now, this may be the positive, but there are actually some drawbacks as well. well. Being at that low orbit means that they have to work harder and expend more resources to stay in orbit. Now, SpaceX thinks they've tested enough and have solutions to fix this as well. I want to throw throw it to you guys, to my co-host here. Now, to me... Um, I'm going to throw it to you first, Curtis. Now, it sounds like SpaceX could just be adding just more orbital debris. Um, is this, is, is this like, for instance, Amazon is actually planning 3,000 of their own low orbit space, space satellites here. Now, are we just adding to that? Are we just adding to the orbital debris? Or is this, is this going to be a chance for, for Internet around the world and we're not going to have an issue with orbital problems? Um, I, I think the answer to your question is yes, uh, <laughs> because... On the one hand, this does add to the number of objects up there in orbit. On the other hand, the question really is not just objects in orbit, but at which altitude they're in orbit. Um, We have all kinds of different, uh, if you want to think of them as bands or layers uh, of orbiting material, uh, some of those are pretty crowded bands. Uh, The... Uh, altitudes at which objects become uh, geostationary, for example, um, can be can be somewhat crowded. Um, the the SpaceX reapplication shows that they are looking at an altitude that is considerably below where most uh, critical, both scientific and communication satellites live, and that's a good thing. My real question about these is is twofold. First, if they're going to come down every five years, what's that going to do to the cost? I mean, if you've got to relaunch these satellites every five years, it's got to up the infrastructure cost, although if you own the rockets, that probably helps. The other thing uh, is around this idea that they're designed to burn up completely on reentry. Uh, that's wonderful. That's safe. Um, I also want to see it because it doesn't take a huge chunk of something uh, descending upon the earth from 550 kilometers um, to to seriously ruin your day if it if it lands in your lap. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, Chief, I want to throw this to you. Now, how does now by lowering the orbit, how does this change the technology for them? Uh, low Earth orbit, well, when you start talking about that kind of orbits, it has to move faster. So the University of Hawaii actually has CubeSats, well, microsats, that we launch. And the cool thing is they're launched at very low altitudes, but they move like a son of a, bu- son of a gun. So you, when you actually see our antennas, which are actually almost directly above my head, uh, tracking, it's kind of going like nice and fast. Um, so you don't you have smaller windows to download data from them. So Kurt and I actually did a test many, many, many years ago with when we were both working for InfoWorld on a device called a digital fountain. And um, so what SpaceX and other people are going to start having to do when they start talking about devices that small moving that fast, they're going to have to get a lot more creative on how they do communications. So very, very quickly, Digital fountains are kind of like RAID. You have all these different 
slices. They purposely slice up your data and add a whole bunch of error correction codes to each channel. Then if the data com link is uh, reliable, it will purposely drop out channels and mathematically recreate them at the far end. So that way you can move more data quicker in the same arc angle um, when you're having a nice fast satellite. So yeah, these things are going to be moving. They're going to have to have different types of technology. Um, personally, I think they're going to have to get away from traditional batteries because um, you don't want to have lithium ion batteries in there. They're probably going to be going to small hydrogen based fuel cells so that when they burn up, they burn up completely. Um, there's actually some research on paper hydrogen fuel cells, which are kind of an interesting technology. So, yeah. So to directly answer your question, there are going to have to be a lot of technology changes to be able to play at that kind of altitude. And the good news is a lot of it's already been solved by the folks that are launching CubeSats. Now, I think Curtis brought up an interesting question before. He said, hey, this is a fairly highly populated portion of altitude. Uh, for instance, the Air Force is in that area with their satellites, the Iridium Network, uh, Dove satellites, um, the, Indian, the Indian government's testing a bunch of AS, uh, ASAT tests in that kind of area. Curtis, do you think that this is the low orbit satellites or just the new plastics of space? Are we doing too much dumping here? Well, there there is some some crowding going on, and it's complicated by things like the um, the Indian government's recent anti satellite test, which successfully blew up a satellite. Oh, by the way, sprinkling space debris throughout uh, an orbital ring. Um, the thing is, in general. The various nations who are spacefaring nations, the nations who are putting up, nations and companies that are putting up uh, satellites, uh, coordinate. They know where the satellites are supposed to be. Um, the problem comes in things that aren't satellites. If you have uh, a malfunction that blows a satellite apart, uh, if you have pieces and parts that come off of rockets boosting a satellite to a higher orbit, uh, things that aren't planned, those are the real issues. The things we know about, the things that are intentional, uh, the things that are behaving properly, those can be planned for, those can be worked around, kind of like the air traffic control around airports. It's um, the random drones of the orbital rings um, that cause real problems and which I suspect we're going to have to be worried about uh, more and more as time goes on. 